The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Might Be Brews, Season 2, Episode 5, the podcast where we explore the people, places, and brews of the craft beer world. My name is John, and with me as always, across from me at the table, Mr. Steve. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing very well, thank you. Mr. Steve in the house. So, <laughs> Mr. Steve. Mr. Uh, Steve. Yes. I like that name. Love and it. the man behind the board, as always, my brother Taylor. How you doing, man? What up, man? And our special guest, a good friend of the show, our resident scientist, Brett. <laughs> how you doing, Brett? Hey, everybody. You are our most frequent guest for sure, aren't you? I think so. Is number Has three. Has anybody number three. been a guest more often? No. I don't think so. Dave's done two. Yeah, Dave's done two. Dave's done two. He's a close second. But Brett, man, how you doing today? I am great. Hoping uh, everybody goes home and cracks a beer this Friday. Yeah, yes. we're, we're ready for beer cracking. Let's Brett. call let's call Brett our Tom Hanks. He's like Tom Hanks on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I think he's done the most uh, hosting uh, gigs. I think yeah. you're right. Nice. Brett, Brett is also a Patreon member. He is. So thank you, Brett. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Brett. You guys are putting out great work. Thank you, man. I he's got his that. he's got his new Might Be News Network Tumblr. Yeah. Dude, that thing's nice. All right. You've it's been nice. talking it up on the network. Yeah. And it's cool. I hadn't actually seen one yet. This is your first time seeing it, yeah. In person. It's nice. And look, I'm I'm a weirdo, like I'm sure a lot of you guys are too, when when we're into this craft beer and we've got proper glassware and things like that. For me, my tumbler has to be glass or stainless steel on the inside because I think you get a funny taste off of plastic. This is stainless steel inside and out. This is a high quality. What's it? Double wall. Double line, baby. Double, double line. Double stainless <laughs> steel. Double line. All week. Oh, it's got the push top. No screw on. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's a very, very nice tumbler. Airtight. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's got a 16 ounce. Stainless steel with the with the logo on the front. Oh. And look, it it's, starts it's at five dollars a month. Yeah, five dollars a month. Five dollars a month gets you a a, a tumbler right away. If you bought this at the store, episode. it's got to be eighty five dollars. Yeah, at I least eighty five. So. At least eighty five. <laughs> like it's high quality. You you take that thing to the park, put a beer in it. Oh yeah, nobody knows. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point, no doubt. And that's- this back is wide open for when we release our might be brews stickers. Yeah, exactly. And it's gonna go. Right on the back there. Absolutely. Yep. Patreon.com slash MBN network. Yes. You'll get an extra 30 minutes of content on every show, including you'll, this one, including this one. Of course, you'll get access to our extra 30 minutes, which I've been trying to think of a creative name for it. And I, I, I the, my the best one I've thought of so far is the kick the keg segment. Oh, kick the keg's good. Oh, kick the keg. Like you got to get everything out. You're trying We're to get the done. keg right now. We got to yeah. kick the keg. Wow. So before we go, that was the most. I like it. I was yeah. I was thinking of a play off the power hour. Yep. Okay. The power yep. half hour. Nice. And then I, I also I always love the you, I'm older than you guys, so you might not remember the old MTV half hour comedy hour. Okay. Yes. Which I thought was just a brilliant name. Yeah. But I couldn't I, I hear figure you. it out. I, we don't have it pegged yeah. yet. No. I'm I'm leaning toward kick the keg because I like that yeah. idea, like you're trying to get rid of that shit. Like you need to get done, and we we always have like half of our topics left, and we're trying to just get it yeah. get it I flushed it. out of the system. Kicking the keg. So we'll see. Kick the keg segment. We'll, we'll figure that out. So if wow. you want we'll try it to on. that, we'll try it out. We're gonna we'll take, take it a, for a test drive. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. <laughs> test drive tonight. We're gonna test drive a test pour. And speaking of tonight, let's let's put it out there. Let's put it out there right out in the open. So we're we are off a week of our recording. Yep. Yes. So by the time this and episode have been for like a while, yeah, 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 for a couple of weeks now. So we're we're recording two Thursdays ago <laughs> in the time space continuum. Yep. So we showed up to Taylor's house tonight to record our episode, and he had no fucking idea we were coming <laughs> over here. Yo, I had no clue. Dude, we walked in, and, and he like. He's like, yo, and I look at the table. There's nothing on the table. <laughs> like, there's no equipment. Yeah. Nothing's ready. Yeah. Finn's not barking. Yeah. We were in the other it room. It was watching. dark. It was dark in here, and it never is. Yeah. And we're like, well, is he, is we were we home? were like done for the night. Yeah. We were we were we <laughs> yeah. were watching TV, just hanging out, and like, That's no, so you're funny. not. You're and not done Jack, now. Jackie just looks over at me. She's like, 
the bruise guys are here. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what? And she was like, the, the bruise guys are here. I'm not kidding you. And then all of a sudden I walk around the corner and here you guys are. You were ready for bed and now you're going to do a podcast for an hour and a half. I, yeah, I, w- <laughs> I totally was not planning on drinking tonight. So well, this surprise. is this, this could Plan get done again. Yeah, I'm dude. I'm hype. I'm, I'm uh, now that I like I said, I had to, I, I had definitely had to collect myself, uh, but I'm good. And and speaking of secrets, I think there's going to be another secret coming out a little bit later in the episode of a secret. But we'll get to that. There's going to be a, a secret's a strong word, but yeah, you know, a little story of something that might have happened to uh, a surprise. Week. A surprise, we'll call it. Oh, we'll, we'll hint at it. This is going right over my head. I don't know if I know about this <laughs> you, or, if, you, or if this is my story. I you, don't know. It's not your story. Okay. You completely know about. It. We talked about it in the car on the way over here, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah. I'm blanking what, right now. What we need to get to right now? We got to crack a beer. We, we got to crack, crack a beer. beer. Here yeah. we go. That's awesome. Everybody, we need some silence. Here we go. Oh, that was good. That, was a good that sounded one. really good in headphones. What are we drinking tonight? All right. I got to give a big shout out to the homie John Harahan. I just had a John Harahan breakthrough. Yeah. We've been talking about him. He's a friend of the show. He listens. Yeah, what up, John? Um, I know the name, but I can't place him. Yo, John Nothing. Harahan was like one of my first friends when I moved to Pennsylvania. Right. Straight so up. He was. I feel like I should know him, and it was bothering me that I can't place him from our college or not I mean from high school and everything, right? So I end up doing a little bit of Instagram stalking. Stalker. Yeah. And when I first pulled up his page, it's all like books and stuff because he's like really smart, I think. I and um, I had to go back and look through pictures for a while and then i found a picture of him where i'm like i know exactly who he is now so i just had that aha moment so now john we've been we've been like messaging each other and sending beer back and forth so i sent him a package of beer he sent me some beers um from minnesota where he's at he's brewing at surly this beer is from surly right yes yes, it is this is rose lager and he sent me this really nice or or rose lager or rose it could co-host kev now yeah (laughs) He put a little thing over the E, so I'm sure it's rosé. Crisp, clean, refreshing, <laughs> flavorful, he put. Coast so, let's put them up, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Happy uh, Thursday. Happy yeah. Thursday. Happy, Happy podcast Friday. recording. Yeah. Happy surprise yeah. to see you, Taylor. <laughs> you get, re- get ready to, to go to bed. And yeah. you're drinking. Now I'm drinking. You, so. you look like you got punked when we walked in. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like just in my PJs and shit. <laughs> yeah. Just hanging out. Like, oh, That's man. funny. It was it, that that it felt like I was being punked. I was like, "You guys aren't really here to do a podcast, are you?" You yeah, just like why not? you were just at the like just the bar down the street and just figure, "Oh, let's go over there and pretend <laughs> we're gonna fucking record." <laughs> His bar gin. you know what I mean? That's, That's funny. I really didn't think that. I just knew that I made a mistake. <laughs> something <laughs> like something happened. I maybe I was supposed to know this. I think I we didn't. talked about it last time before we left because I had it in my yeah, calendar. Yeah. I've just been thrown. But off. at the same time, we have like a little separate group going, be- like a chat group, right. because of the last bottle share. So I but, think we were doing a lot of our communications just between me, you, and um, shout out Devin. Devin McNeil was supposed to be here tonight, uh, and not until last minute, he got stuck with work stuff down in Atlantic City, and he couldn't make it here in time. Get your ass here sometime, Devin. I know. So we miss you, dude. Uh, sorry you can't be here, but the show must go on. What do you guys think about Rose Lager from Surly Brewing, Minnesota? I, I, it's interesting. Uh, I read the side uh, lager brewed with black currant and strawberries. Um, I definitely get a natural strawberry taste at the end. It's got that crispness of the lager, but then that those fruit notes kind of come around in the back for me. Yeah, I think it balances it. Um, I think I think by itself, if you didn't have that. Um, the, the color is really cool. Let's start with that. It does have like a really nice um, pink um, color to it. But it's I, I would imagine that it's a very amazing lager on its own. Mm-hmm. And that little bit of strawberry is just a nice refreshing kick. It's been so freaking hot and humid around here that like this just makes it a little bit more refreshing. Refreshing is a good word for it. I, I find it a little dry. It's like a like a champagne. Yeah. I see that. I like that though. I think I like when they're when they're a little dry. The, uh, by dry, do you mean like overcarbonated? No, like a a brute champagne. Just it okay. leaves a light uh, flavor in your mouth. Yeah, it kind of dries you out in the back of your mouth, like at the end, like when it yeah. Finishes. That's what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. 
I don't like that. You, do you like this beer? I like the beer. Okay. I don't. That's like the only aspect of this beer that I'm not a fan of. It's just like the dryness of it. I was going to say uh, whatever. No, dryness is a, is a better description of yeah. what I was thinking. But um, I don't even really, I didn't even really taste strawberry until you said something about it. Um, this is overall 100 times better than Natterdays. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I had that thought. Like, I, there was like a little reminder of that Natter Days, but this is, you know, what what it should be compared to Natter Days. This is a five, but in real life, this is a four for me. Okay, I'm gonna go four. It's a very very good lager. It's um, I do like the little strawberry in there. I couldn't pick out for sure by myself that it was strawberry. The but flavor's there was good. definitely yeah. a good flavor. And it doesn't yeah. taste like gross fake strawberry yeah. either. The the dryness is the only negative for me. Yeah. But it's a big negative. I think I'm gonna what, rain on your parade a little because it's been so hot and humid. Um two seven five. I I don't like the dryness. I I get mm. a little bit of the strawberry, uh, but the dryness kind of leaves me wanting a little bit more so it's just not definitely takes away from the flavor yeah i'm going 375 i would uh i would drink again i like it i'm excited i'm actually going to surly next month and i'm pumped are you flying yes i think uh you got to bring back some uh some uh gift bags yeah i'll definitely figure something out there um i'm sure i'll have some space in my carry-on to, uh, you can't do the carry on, right? I'm sorry, not carry on my check bag. Yeah, there you go. Check bag. That was when I went to Florida. It was disappointing that I couldn't do that because I only had the carry on. So I didn't have any any place I could bring back any brews. You got to put a suitcase in your carry on so that when you fly back, you have a you're not An paying a double one. bag, paying a, for a, basically an empty bag to come down. Yep. Yeah, I hear you. That's a good idea. Or I, I've gotten pretty good at flying, though. You got to watch your weights. So I'm usually like right at that 50 pound mark. And if you go over, you have to pay a hundred hours for so that bag. You just got to open a beer up in the airport and yeah, drink right. it. <laughs> so usually I can get rid of enough weight at the trade show that I've got room. I've got a few pounds for the way home. So I got I got some extra room. That's <laughs> like you're dieting. I know, right? <laughs> I I trying cut, to make it work. I got to cut weight. You know, have any of you guys had a Schmitz? beer a schmitz yeah i don't think that i've had i'll see if i can pull up a picture of it but um Taylor, i don't know if you knew um my kid's great great grandfather though so it's ben's great grandfather robin's great grandfather he passed away last week okay he's 93 if anybody's like a westchester person a lot of people in westchester know him because he worked at rubenstein's for like 68 years of the uh, oh, wow. office supply yeah. joint. Yep. Yeah. And he did framing. He was in, he like pretty much opened and ran the, f- the framing department for them. And um, so a lot of people know him, you know, that, that are in and around Westchester. Uh, his name was Ray beam. He, the memories I have of him where we would go up to a camp they had up in, I think it's Loganton, Pennsylvania. And um, the dude could drink, man. He was in his eighties when we were up there last we went rabbit hunting. I don't. I don't hunt really, but um, he was quick with the with the shotgun. You know what I mean. Even at that age, he was really sharp. But he was smashing Schmitz. <laughs> like like we were up late, and you would think like an eighty something year old would go to bed early, and he was just sitting at the table bullshitting with us, drinking. So we we did the funeral yesterday. We get back to to my in laws' house, and there's a Schmitz in the fridge, and I had to have it, and. I shotgunned it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, I gotta have this beer. And then um, they were cracking out tequila and stuff, and people started drinking heavy stuff. And I was like, I gotta get get this going. And uh, Ben watched me. I actually asked Ben. I was like, you got a knife on you? And he handed me a knife, and I shotgun shotgun wow. the Schmitz. And I was like, and he was like, I can't believe you just did that. And I was like, hashtag for pop. Because <laughs> of his quick trigger hand. Yeah, I don't know. I just. You know, I guess I wanted to. I, I wish I recorded it for Chug Nerds or something. But um, <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying. Um, R.I.P. Pop. Yeah, shut up, shout out. And uh, mm-hmm. man, it was a uh, cool dude, man. Ninety three. Yeah, ninety three. That's a great run. I'm looking at Schmidt's beer online and just seeing a million different can labels. They did a lot of uh, 
red like and wildlife cl- yes. cans. Yep. Like special cans, it looks like. Let me see, because it sounds kind of familiar. I think it's probably like just dirt cheap. Yeah, beer. I've had that before. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. I ever ran across this one. It's, it wasn't bad, I just, but I also shotgun it, so it went down quick. It was nice and cold, and it was good stuff. So let's move on to something more. Um, has everybody rated the beer? Everybody did, right? Did. So I think we should just move right on to the next one. Um, we've got a very, very special beer here for our next opening. And, uh, I, it's it's pretty rare. Um, I was lucky enough to come across this two, three weeks ago. Um it's it's spelled a little weird. L I T E. Is this a whale? This is this a is a whale. whale. It, it literally is a white whale. It's Miller Light. <laughs> <laughs> so you might ask, why are we why are we drinking Miller Light when you know? Pretty sure we've all had our uh, our Miller Lights before. So this is the start of our um, how, how, what do we want to call it? Our beer style bonanza. I guess we could. There call we go. It. Oh. oh. So we're going to try and run through as many of the different beer styles as we can. And we're going to start with the the BJCP, the Beer Judge Certification Program, um, the way they have them categorized. And the first beer is number one, standard American beer, uh, style 1A, American light lager. So is that what this is? Because it says a fine Pilsner on it. Is that so so it? All, all Pilsners are lagers. Okay. But not I didn't realize all, that. But not all loggers are pilsners. Wow. It's like a square rectangle kind of thing. Wow. Schooled me. Interesting. All right. So everybody's had them. Let's um let's get it. Should I read through the yet. uh I'm I'm trying to read and, and clear okay. out my glass here at the same time. <laughs> I just I just wanted to make sure you didn't think that <laughs> I was have light. I have my yeah. It's a little light. Yeah. <laughs> it's I have a little some, thin. I, I have some water in my cup and uh I, that I was rinsing with. So um should we go through the uh, the the style guidelines? Yes, absolutely. Overall impression: highly carbonated, light bodied, uh, aroma low to no malt, although it can be perceived uh, grainy, sweet, or corn like if it's present. Hop aroma is light to none. Uh, appearance very straw pale to pale yellow. Uh, flavor relatively neutral palate with crisp and dry finish. Um, mouthfeel very light, sometimes watery. Um, comments designed to appeal to a broad range of general public public as possible. Uh, strong flavors are a fault. Wow! So if this if you tried to make an American light lager and put it in for judging, and it it had a very strong flavor to it, that would be points against it. Like rosé would not the one we just had would not do well in that category. Would not do well in this category. Um, Some commercial examples are Bud Light, Coors Light, Keystone Light, Michelob Light, Miller Light, and Old Milwaukee Light. Man. Hmm. I was was just taking a look at that can. What year do you think Miller opened? That's got to be 1936. I'm guessing 1890s. I think it's like 1970. 1855. Whoa. I mean, I'm thinking of when Miller Light came out itself. Huh. That's probably a lot later, but right. is Miller Genuine Draft was that the first one? I don't know. I, I don't I'm, know either. I'm not up on my Miller history. <laughs> I gotta say, I like that they went back to this old school '80s can. This I, I had an uncle that used to drink this. Yep, and this is I felt like I it was a tattoo on his hand because <laughs> right? he always had <laughs> yeah. one in his hand. It w- driving someplace, yeah. he had one. Like he always had Miller Lights in his hand. I had like a weird nostalgic feeling when I first saw that can on a commercial where they were coming back out with it, and I was like, "Man!" And I, I don't know. I just like the design of it. I think it's cool. Are you guys loyal to a Miller Light versus a Bud Light versus a Coors Light, or do you have a eh, take whatever is in the fridge? I would put Miller Light above all of those. Except for Bud Light Lime, yeah, I do as well. You can't, you can't count Lime. Lime's no. got to be a different. That's, that's a different. That's thing. a different thing. But out of all those, in this like, category, Miller Light. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not mad at having like Miller Lights in my fridge because, like, if I'm gonna have like a really cheap beer like this, this is probably the you know the best one in my opinion. This is actually left over from when you guys came over for our podcast party. <laughs> These were oh, yeah. uh, from co-host Kev. Oh, yeah, yeah. Co-host Kev just getting all kinds of shout-outs on this show tonight. He is. Fuck him. 
<laughs> We're going to have you come do our intro next time. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> He's a fucking suck Sounds like it'll be pretty too. quick. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> fucking suck at that. Too. That's funny. Uh, I definitely go Miller Lite uh, above the others. Um, I would go Miller Lite, Coors Lite, Bud Lite. I, Bud products to me, just there's something in them that I can't, I really can't do. Yeah, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, um, I approached somebody in the airport because he had on a, a beer hat. I want to say it was like Sweetwater or something. I was like, nice hat. And he was like, oh, thanks. And then I noticed he had a shirt, too. And I was like, are you in the industry? And he was like, yeah, I was just, you know, doing some kind of training or who knows what. And um, I was just telling him I was from Philly. And then he like parked up and he was like, it's really interesting that we usually categorize markets on whether they're a Bud Light market or a Miller Light market, because it's usually one or the other. That's Mm -hmm. the top seller in the area. Philadelphia has always been a Miller Light um, market where right. it was Miller Lite heavy until the Super Bowl. Philly went to the Super Bowl. They started running Bud Light commercials for Philly Philly. Yeah. And um, they took over and now it's a Bud Light town. When we were down there for the parade, they had Skywriters writing the uh, Philly Philly dilly dilly in, yep. the, uh, in the sky. I just thought that was really interesting that, you know, a marketing campaign like that had enough swing that. Um, it kind of turned the town, and supposedly, according to this guy, that's like the number one selling light beer in uh, in Philly. Jackie brought back a bunch of Bud Light from a bachelorette party that she was at. Yeah, and I find this shit basically undrinkable. Oh, yeah. like I just I there's something about it. Like Miller Light, it is like water. Like Bud Light, just there's something about it that makes it way worse to me. Would you have said that? Season one, episode one. Yes. Okay. Because this is, this is beer that <laughs> I would have drank. This is beer that I would have uh, that I would have had. You know what I mean? Miller Lite was pretty much a staple, unless of of course I was drinking Bud Light Lime, like I said, because that's pretty much my go to anytime beer. Uh, but um, I would go Miller Lite, Coors Light, Bud Light, hmm. and I would rank it like: Are we doing this out of five? Like a normal beer? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> I mean, this beer is for everybody. It's, Champagne? No, that's the no, that's that's, that's high life. High that's high, high life. life. Which I have some of those at my house. High from life CJ. is delicious. High life is fantastic. That's CJ left a couple uh, champagne of beers in my fridge. Yeah, yeah. You remember back in like early jam days, like every time I'd go to Club Thirty Three Hundred. Yeah, I, I would bring four pack pounder. Yep. My wife's. High you life. just you just went into a different language. I have no idea. what Yeah, you're talking I know. About. It was just yeah. for me and Taylor, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. Uh, uh, what do you what do you rate this beer? I want to hear someone else do it before I do it. I guess I rate it a two, two, offensive to you. It's I rated it a two. You brought it. <laughs> I, I we all knew what it was. It's not like it changed because I brought it. Uh, I I give it a two five. Um, it's it is what it is. You can crush it. That's that's what it's here for. That's what I was going to give it a two five. I I don't know if it's you know actually me or the beer but um after drinking it i almost start to get this little feeling of like a headache coming on and i feel like sometimes with shitty light beers that happens to me um you know especially like pilsners and lagers you know the light stuff like that but sometimes it just starts messing with my head i don't know so i don't know if that's really happening or not but i don't know it's it's not bad though like i said if if i'm gonna like drink all day i don't mind having a couple of these there's enough flavor in there that it's like this is not gross, but it's not great. Out of that- a keg, it's fantastic. You think? I mean, way better than I think in out of like a can. This is a beer I'd be okay getting in a frosted glass. I think it yeah, almost yeah. has to be. <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to say that. I don't, as this warms up, I don't want to have any parts of it. Yeah. Ice uh, cold. A, a long time ago, I heard somebody use the word descript, uh, the descriptor cardboard. Huh. When describing that. And ever since that, that's all I can think of. And all that's. <laughs> That's all, the only flavor that gets into my brain. Yeah, I give it. I give it a three seven five because uh, something that plays heavily for me is the uh, the ability for Miller Lite to reach the masses. Like this is a beer for everybody. Like this style of beer, and in my opinion, it is the best out of the heavy hitters. Yep. In uh, its, yeah. In its the, category, the popular ones. Yeah, yep. you know what I mean. And uh, so that plays into it heavily for me. 
I mean, this is something that you could go to a concert or go someplace and just drink this shit all day. Yeah, you'll get hung over, but like you're not going to feel so dragged down by by the all the hops and all the other sure. stuff. You know what I mean? But like since this show has started, I have been exposed to a whole lot of other beers and the flavors, and I've, I've experienced the craftsmanship of that stuff. So I can appreciate that because I would give this a higher score. Do do you think that nostalgia of uh, the Hangover is what makes it? Uh, maybe, but like I think that like it's it's just like I said, it's for everyone. This is a beer that literally anyone can drink. If you've never had a beer before in your life, or if you've had a million beers in your life, you could always pick up a Miller Lite and drink it. True. So if you're playing along with us next week, the uh, style will be American Lager. So we move up from the light lager up to the. American lager category. You have any examples? I do. <laughs> Commercial examples are Budweiser, Coors Original, Green Belt Premium Lager. Oh, who's that? I've never heard of that in my Me life. Either. Miller High Life, which I will be bringing because I still have, still have one. Have them in the fridge. The yeah. Champagne and beers will make an appearance. Spoiler alert: It's a five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon and Special Export. Another one I've never heard of. Yingling, right? Is that a? It oh, is, but it's just not listed as the commercial examples. It's a shame. Hmm. Yeah. Yo, I would drink I would drink the champagne of beer all day over Yingling. <laughs> I would. <laughs> yeah. I would I'm drink that all now. day. I'm looking I, forward to this. I am so loyal to Yingling. I really? yeah. I love it. I love it too, but I haven't had it in a minute. High life, man. Wow. <laughs> it's just so smooth. Have you um did you guys see speaking of Paps, there's a Paps coffee, like a, a hard coffee drink out now? Really? It's in a can, you know, mm-hmm. it's the Paps can, but it's like kind of tannish, I think. It looks really cool and it says hard I think it says hard coffee on it. Yeah, something like that. I saw I somebody posted I it. saw it yeah. posted, but I never had one. Does it have alcohol or is it just oh, yeah, like it's a five percent? Oh, oh, okay. It's five percent. But it, I, they're not really saying it's a coffee beer. They're saying it's hard coffee, but I'm very intrigued. I gotta keep an eye out for it. I think it'll be a new style, like a new thing people take up. Maybe. I mean, who knows? People. Were, it seems like breweries are getting away from beer. How are those teas coming along? I know you like them, right? The, what, the hop tea. Hop tea, yeah. I ah. haven't ordered them since. <laughs> yeah. You, were, you were big on them, weren't I you? I was cool. Yeah, but you know, they're expensive. And <laughs> of course they are. They're healthy for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I like ordered a bunch, and they're supposed to start being carried at like Whole Foods. So like oh, if really? I ever see them on the shelf, I might grab one or two, but I'm not going to buy a case for like three dollars a can or whatever it is. But just in case the people that make the hop tea are listening, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> make better stuff. It's yeah, make better stuff. Idea. We'll have you I, on. <laughs> I liked it. I think what was happening is I was like trying to cut back on my beer consumption and I felt like I was getting a good compromise, but I just now drink beer instead of that and I'll take <laughs> beer over yeah. that every time. Drink more Miller Lite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had uh, I had coffee once that had hop, hops in the coffee grains. Really? Yeah. What was that um, like? So my buddy out, out west, he sent them to me and not good. Uh, no. It, it, <laughs> no it, it was cool. It was really neat to see like, oh, that's, that could be good. Uh, no, in, in brewing that coffee, it was just weird. Uh, it was two very competing flavors, like uh, not... Not for everybody. It should have stayed in the package. I've had like um like coffee IPAs and stuff like that. Yeah. And sometimes they're decent. But how many uh how many miles have you run this week, Brett? Ten. Really? Ten miles. Ten miles? Put in five before the episode. Did you really? <laughs> I, did. I had did to. You? Yeah. T- Thursdays is my, my run day. Oh, wow. I thought you were playing. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I, serious. I run five miles and then I drink with some buddies and then Come do the episode. Yeah. yeah. It was humid as heck out there, too. Yeah, it was. It was, it was rough. The reason I bring it up is I saw a, a little article here that there's a, I think it's a brewery called twelve po- or 26.2 Brew. Have you seen this? That is uh, originally the Boston Marathon. Uh, it's for the Boston Marathon, but it uh, came from Sam Adams. So, Oh, is this a Boston beer company? I think that it's like a spinoff. They brewed that beer i want to say 2012 2013 something like that um and it was like a limited release to all the people that ran the boston marathon oh wow okay so i got it then um and now it's kind of grown that it's it's beyond just the marathon now people can get it regularly um 
It's a, it's a standard light beer. It tastes a whole hell of a lot better after you run 26 miles. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So does everything. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you kind of like just went ahead and ran with it. Um, yeah. Funny play Get on it. words there. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> ran with it? I didn't even mean to do that. Yeah. yeah. That was funny. But yeah, man, Um, I thought it was kind of neat. I, was, I, I saw that pop up on the news feed and I was thinking about you and you're running and I was like, oh, we should bring it up on the show. And you know everything about it. But Boston Beer Company, yeah, you said it, unveiled 26.2 brew, a golden ale made specifically for runners with an ABV of just 4%. The beer is brewed with Himalayan sea salt, a.k.a. electrolytes, and contains only 9 grams of carbs and 120 calories. So um, give it a try. Kind of interesting. So I guess, is it really popular with runners and stuff? It is. On Marathon Monday, it's it's the best beer in uh, Boston. Um, yeah, I bet. Yeah. But, nice. So um, what did we do? Two? We only did two beers? We did, we did two. We got to pick up our pace after yeah, the break. We here. really do. All right. We're going to take a quick break. You know, I'm kind of glad we were going to. Um, I usually do all the spiel about like, you know, our social media and Patreon and all that stuff. But I think our uh, our guy that does the uh, the break music or whatever, the break thing, he, he explains it perfectly. So we'll go ahead with that and uh, we'll be right back in a minute. So you've been listening to the Might Be News Network, but you still can't get enough each week? Become our patron on Patreon. Head to patreon.com slash MBN Network to become a patron and get exclusive content now. For as little as $5 per month, you'll get access to extended episodes of all your favorite shows, as well as perks including MBN merch and monthly giveaways. Just want to support the network? Become a patron for as much or as little as you'd like. Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Two hours of bonus content each week guaranteed. Your contributions will help make the might be news network bigger and better than ever before patreon.com slash mbn network Right, everybody. Welcome back to Might Be Brews. We were talking over break there, and uh, Brett came up with a good line. You want to bring it out? Or you want me to? It's all you. Do you remember uh, it? I forget you know, it already. Beer tastes better when you tag a friend. Beer tastes better when you tag a friend. So we want you guys out there listening. You guys already know where to find us because you're listening. But tag a friend. Let everybody know that you're listening to Might Be Brews. Bring us some more viewers and uh, share the wealth of our uh our, our podcast with others right? i would really appreciate it there's a there's a thing on patreon uh by now it's not out there right now but by now there will be um where we outline where we're going from here we got a lot of things in store that includes the show the show's gonna do a lot of big things absolutely the show's gonna do a lot of big things and so. there's so many different things going on across the network check out all the other shows um Novak and Franz getting into a little UFO talk. That was crazy. Yeah. Shit was fascinating. Very crazy. I didn't finish it, but um, it's just crazy. Like the content that's coming out on this network lately, you've got this awesome UFO sh- show with like people that were involved in the government and the Navy that um, are experts that have TV shows about UFOs. Like it was a really, really good show. Um, Foundation Radio had David Tuck, the uh, Holocaust survivor. Yep. That was an incredibly powerful interview. Yep. I just I, I I finished the episode and was speechless. I couldn't think of like what to say to myself to like recap it or or to whatever. I, I just found myself being like, "Wow, I that was a very powerful, um, meaningful, you know, interview. It was just crazy." Yeah. Um, so I don't know the stuff that's coming out, man. It's, it's really, really cool. Check it out. MBNnetwork.com. It's never been easier to find your favorite podcast. Damn. There he is. Hitting the tag. <laughs> I was thinking that like, it's never been easier, but it's been easy for a while now. Yeah. I don't know if we can easy. keep saying that. It's uh, just easy as shit to find your favorite podcast. If they've never tried it, it's, <laughs> this is some easy shit. It's easy. never been easier. Yeah. All right. Um, let's crack, beer. let's crack a beer and let's talk about. Um, well, let's crack the beer first. This yes. is another one from Mr. John Harahan, and he sent me this really nice package with a really nice message in there. Dear might be brews team. And he put um, little descriptions to all the different beers. 
this beer is um how do you say that you tepples yeah you, you go ahead crack that that sounds Ooh. nice i'm, I'm i may be pronouncing back. it incorrectly U T E P I L S U Tepples U T U I don't know whatever. It's an alt beer. Ute pills maybe. Ute pills maybe. That that sounds probably more likely. <laughs> this is a G A B F Great American Beer Fest alt beer medal winner, and this is another Minneapolis beer. So this is a medal winning beer. And um, if you would have asked me, you know, a few months ago what an alt beer was, I would have told you that it just didn't have a category and it was the radio 104.5 of beers it's just alternative um <laughs> we found out from mr gov from east branch that alt is actually a style that translate to translates to old beer but um it's like an old style um what's it say dusseldorf on here it's not like a green day beer i guess not dusseldorf that's a uh, that's in germany right yeah, so it's got to be a very specific German style. Um, it says European style on there. That must be pills, what it is. And yeah. oot, oot pills sounds German to me. Yeah. So I probably butchered it. Steve, you uh, helped me out and saved us. Lots of caramel kind of uh, malt coming out at that. A lot. Yeah. It, it almost gives like a perceived smokiness to me. I'm not getting the smoky. I get a I'm little little bit of smoky, but caramel. Like yeah, caramel it's caramel definitely. heavy, and it finishes with like a smoky note to me. And I doubt that there's, I don't know, it could be. I'm going to read this while you guys talk about it. See, now I feel like if if you introduced, I know you were talking about Miller Lite being a mirror, uh, beer for the people and easy to introduce people. I feel like this would be an easy introduction to beer for agreed, people. Agreed, agreed. And a much, much more robust introduction. And it's, 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 it's so much more flavorful than than the Miller Lite. Yep. 4.5%. 50 IBUs, it says on the can. A very, but lots of bread bread notes in there, too. Yeah, yeah. Good call on that. I feel like this is like, I don't know. I feel like this is a, <clears throat> like a beer's beer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make any sense to you? It does. Like, I feel like this is what they're drinking in every, like, movie and, like, the like every dive bar, like, where there's just, like, give, give me a give me a brew and a shot you know they're drinking this i feel like yeah. this is just like a i like this a lot do you i do yeah i i imagine like walking into a just some random pub in europe and yeah. and they just pour like you know let me get a pint. yeah let me just, get a pint let me get a it's pint. like a kind and of a dark that's this yeah. yeah so i almost feel like this yeah. should be served in a boot yeah there you yeah. go yep so just to just to clarify this Ute Pills is the brewery. Yeah, I just saw yep. that. Yeah, Ute Pills is the brewing, and the beer is Alt 1848. Okay. That's how you know it's old. Older that's than when Miller. Was, that's when it was canned in 1848. <laughs> Vintage. Canned and labeled. That, that, is, that would be an old <laughs> beer. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll start it off. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to give it a straight four. I could, uh, I could definitely drink that again. I'm going to go a little less, man. I, I would prefer, I mean, me personally, I would prefer a regular... Uh, traditional lager and pilsner um i do sometimes appreciate the caramel notes um i kind of feel like the smokiness is a little bit of a turn off for my palate personally um and like i said it, i think it's just the way my palate's perceiving it but um i don't know man i probably go like a, a three five i like i like it um it's to me it's kind of just a a beer um I'll give it a three two five i like the caramel i like that but um it's just, uh, it's grainy. There, it's very grainy and mm, kind of mm -hmm. smoky. Uh, maybe that's what uh, oat beer is. I I don't know. But. So so as we're sitting here, I just checked in the beer to Untapped. Yep. My Untapped is linked to my Twitter account. Yep. So when I when I check in on Untapped, it it tweets out. Absolutely. I've already got a reply and a like from Utel Ute Pills Brewery. Nice. Uh, within like seconds. That's wow. amazing. Yeah. That's like the the dude at Levante, Jim. Man, he's like he's on constantly it. on replying to people, and that's sweet, man. It's always cool when you see that. You're like, ooh, somebody's watching me, and yeah. you know, or it's a computer program that just searches for it. And Maybe I it automatically. I love hearing when like a, a a brewery toasts me back on Untapped. Yeah. that is such a great feeling. It is. It is. It, it's it's a strange phenomenon. I'm gonna give this four. 
I would drink this all the time. You like, like it? Like if I if I went out and like it was just kind of perusing the beer store and I happened to see this, I'd get a I'd get a four pack or a six pack or whatever. Nice. Yeah, so, I would get it again. It's so, like it's it. I like the smokiness. At first, I wasn't sure about it because I couldn't necessarily identify it. But when you said it, I was like, "That's what it is." Yeah. And um, the the mouthfeel it's it's it feels like a fuller a fuller beer than obviously a Miller Light, but it's still kind of the same vibe for me. Yeah, it's good. Nice. So let's get into one of the reasons we have Brett here, um, and one of the reasons we were supposed to have. Our boy Devin on here. I thought it was because I was a friend. Well, it is because you're a friend. <laughs> but the the four of us, Devin, Brett, John, myself, we had what we called uh, Belgian Beer Day. Belgian Beer Day. And, um, and this kind of came about uh, a friend of mine, Dave, shout out Dave, uh, brought me back some West Letterland uh, straight from Belgium. I don't know how you say that. Every time I look at that word, I'm like, nope. You just got to go. You just got to. You just got to commit and go. It's the Westville. That's what you, Westville. West and to the VL. Mm. I, I might be saying it wrong. Somebody's probably going to be like, this fucking but guy can't even committed. say it right. You but committed. I'm saying it the same every time. West Letterland. Um, so my boy brought me back a six pack and uh, I posted it on Beer Nerds. And Devin was like, yo, what do you, you want any trade for that? And I said, well, I saw you had some Cantillon over there. Why don't we do some trade for that? And he suggested, well, why don't we just get together and drink these beers instead of doing that? So we had ourselves a, we had ourselves a share. We went over to Brett's house um, and had some beers. Do you have the rundown of, I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the picture, and I, I don't remember. I don't think we just want to list them. The people. names of a lot of them. But I feel like I kind of got lucky on this because the only Cantillon that I had to bring to the table, I got from Brett anyway. <laughs> so you would have brought that on your own anyway. So I kind of feel like I cheated my way into this whole thing. But we were kind of all talking like we all have some really neat beers and big beers that instead of just drinking them on our own, let's get together and make an event out of it. And I kind of like as much as I love sharing with with buddies and stuff like four people was like the right size for that. It was four. It, it gives everyone a good, solid taste. Yeah. And some of these size. bottles aren't aren't big. No. But um, I think for sure the ones that stood out, how do we say this? Fofoon? Sure. Fofoon. 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 That's probably, I'm going to guess, like the most expensive bottle we had, I think, as far as like the retail value of it. I think it's upwards of, you know, 200 plus dollars for the bottle. But that for sure, even it, I think I'm, I'm pretty fair and I don't take that into account when tasting a beer, but that beer for sure had the most wild ride of flavors balance ever it, it, it was crazy where you drink this beer and you you know i was getting these waves of flavors one after the other there was you know something starting it something in the middle something finishing it and it was so complete and so well-rounded and it was it was almost like a like a really beautiful experience wow but, the way I like to crazy. Describe, that's wow. that's how I describe balance when I uh, you can taste everything and nothing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you get you it's tough to pick out the individual flavors, but, you know, there's just so many different things coming at you. So the way we had this set up, um, so we would all you know, we started bottle by bottle. Uh, we also had uh, Devin put together a nice little cheese and charcuterie platter for us, a little brie, a little. What was the berry cheese? I don't remember. Was it, it was a like goat, a goat cheese? cheese? Yeah, it was goat, goat cheese, cheese with berries. Yeah. And there was, was a gouda. sharp. A gouda. It was a gouda. It was a gouda. And was... there was a brie and there was a goat cheese. Yeah, the goat cheese. Yep. Purple. Yep. And then we had some uh, some salamis and yeah. different meats. And it was it was really neat to try the different cheeses with the different beers to to bring out the different flavors. I was would like to get into more of that of discovering what flavors enhance what notes of which beers. Absolutely. Taylor, I remember like our first episode, you were like, how, how do you pair beers? I'm like, we don't really do that. We just drink beers and taste them and whatever. But this was the first time where it was actually laid out in a way where I was tasting these cheeses and these meats with beers. And I would take a sip of the beer and taste it and think about it and then have a little bite of this cheese and then have another sip of beer. And it changed the way it tasted. It kind of changed my palate somehow. And it made it taste better or worse actually 
depending on the beer. And it was really exciting to be like, wow, have that with that. And it's crazy. It's really, really good. Wow. And it was the first time I've really remembered experiencing something like that. And um, and it was incredible. It was we, awesome. should do, we should do an episode. We should. I, wow. I noticed when we were doing the cheeses that I wasn't tasting anything until someone's like, oh, you have a piece of this cheese and, and take a sip. And you're just like, whoa. It's, it's incredible. Apple taste or something. Other than the Canteon, I think it was pretty much. Steve, was that your favorite? Yeah, yeah, that was the foo was my uh, was my favorite. What was second? What else stood out to you? Uh, I'm always going to be a West Flatterland guy. Um, I'm a quad. I love quads. So having that one was uh, was definitely a, a favorite of mine. And then the other one was the um, the whiskey infused uh, Kuvi von Kaiser Blau. It was uh, the a beer that I collect that I'd never had the the whiskey infused version of it. And I thought it was going to be too heavy whiskey and, but I thought it just balanced out really nicely. Yeah, it was fantastic. That was my number two and it was close um, yeah. with, with a fufoon. Um, I love that whiskey. Just it, it, not a hint. It, it was, was there, but caramel it was. it didn't fantastic. overpower. Yeah. It, it aged. I mean, I don't know how long he maybe aged. It might've been two days, three years. I don't know, but uh, I love that just balance. It had, that I remember the free will wit, the 2017 stood out. And that, that was, was really good, good too. It was like a white wine barrel kind of yeah, feel to it. It was really good. You know, I always say to people, or at least I think to myself that I, I, I'm not crazy about Belgian beers, but I found that like a lot of these um, quads and tr- you know um, triples and things like that, they, they have that molasses raisiny taste and and they're delicious. They're incredible beers. They don't have that funkiness that that always turns me off about beers. I think it's the yeast to you. Yeah, I that think there's a certain yeast. yeast. I wish I could track it down, but but those beers did not have that funkiness. Um, I want to say there was an alchemist beer, and I I, I want to say that one I the didn't like that much. Petite Mutal. Yeah, I can't remember. For some reason, I'm thinking I didn't. It was like cherry. That one. I'm yeah, not a cherry, cherry guy. sour. The Mad Skrilla from Stick Brews was good. Um, so, so yeah. the way we kind of started off the evening, we had the uh, we had that wit first, yeah, and then we had I think we had the Mad Skrilla second. It was close, yeah, and yeah. it was a surprise for me um, it was. as to how good it was. Yeah, it was really good. So, uh, right around then, maybe it was a little bit later, uh, John decided he was going to bring his car home. Yeah, so Devin gave me a ride to my house. We dropped the car off before we had too many beers, and uh, we're coming back to the house and. Um, I also was able to pick up. I, I'd forgotten my coleslaw at the house. Oh, I was yeah, bringing for coleslaw. sandwiches and stuff. So we bring it back. And, and uh, we're, we're walking up to the house and I'm hearing the, this noise. And I'm like, what the fuck is that noise? It's like a beeping noise. And I'm like, man, somebody's like got something going off around here. And as we're walking up to the house, I can see through the you know the little window next to the door. Mm-hmm. I see Brett standing there with, with his uh, with like a towel. Mm-hmm. waving it up in, in the air and i'm like what the hell is going on and you open the door and it's like loud as day the, the fire alarm's going off and we walk in like what the hell is going on here what did we miss so so brett <clears throat> excuse me uh smoked a, a pork butt yeah i did for the evening do a little pulled pork uh he finished it in the oven so while it was wrapped in the aluminum foil a little bit of the drippings hit the bottom of the oven. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that happened when you were still there and it was kind of smoky a little bit. Yeah, not bad. It wasn't too bad. A little bit of smoke. It adds adds more flavor, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's a smoky flavor. Yeah. So <laughs> when you guys left, we put the macaroni and cheese that I had made into the oven to heat up. Mm-hmm. Well, evidently there was more grease on the bottom of the oven than we <laughs> anticipated and the entire bottom of the oven yeah. was was flame so flame. yeah for all you uh science nerds probably the flash point was, yeah. that was <laughs> that exactly is what it was that's hilarious we're like like it was on fire yeah. yeah it was it was definitely on fire so so laura or our honey if you're listening i did light the house on fire while you were away <laughs> that's hilarious but obviously we put it out yep that, thanks to so you funny. Thanks to you. I just looked at it with fire in my oven and go, well, there there goes the house. And you're like, oh, get get the flour. And yes. thank God. <laughs> well, thank the first God. thing, we shut the oven door. I was like, all right. So we don't want to throw water in there because we don't want to throw grease all over the place. Went and grabbed some flour, tossed some flour on top of there, smothered it out. It was awesome that you guys were smart enough to do that. I mean, I, no, Steve. You know, Steve. Steve was smart enough. I'm surprised you, the scientist, you weren't like, 
you know, I, knew exactly I knew not to do water. I knew not to do water, yeah. and I could have told you the fire extinguisher to use because yep. all the stupid trainings I had to do, but um, not flour. But that you guys not pretty covered much had science. it under control. But it, it was just hilarious coming back, and it, <laughs> it makes for you know an awesome story. Yeah, we got to keep cracking beers, man. We're we're gonna, going. We got to get as many as we can in. But I'll, I'll just want to say thank you for hosting. Yes, I'm glad we got everything together. The food was awesome. The Your mac and was cheese great. was incredible. The um. The, the pork butt man you you've got that down to a science now that's so good i think i've had your pork three or four times now and i just remember this time just being incredibly delicious you, you gave just, me some to go it. and i had it like the next three yeah, days i was, for yeah, work. I was pounding your macaroni so i think we all mastered our trade i yep. messed up and didn't bring any of your barbecue sauce though I still have some. The bar, I thought that the barbecue sauce, you, you were like, I don't know. Some people don't like it. I thought it was. Excellent. That's all Laura. Shout out to Laura. Well, she, sh- she makes it. Shout out to Laura for learning that her house was on fire yeah, well, yeah. through our podcast. I'm going to be sleeping on the couch for a few days. <laughs> well, you still have a week because this, this isn't going to come out <laughs> yeah, from a good, week good. from now. So you got a couple. You're good. Get your, uh, Cherish those moments. Get your licks in before you, <laughs> before you get kicked out. Yeah, you got to try to get your brownie points up so that when you when the negative comes, you're still ahead. <laughs> they call that. You got to clean. They call that chore play, remember? <laughs> Remember. Okay. <laughs> Short play. That's right. That's hilarious. All right. We got to crack another beer. Here we go. So, this one is Levante Brewing. I love the guys at Levante. I love their beers. This one I was super excited about. If you grew up in the Westchester, Downingtown area, I'm sure you're familiar with Highland Orchards apple cider donuts. Oh, this is the be- that beer? Yes, it is. Oh, yes, shit. it is. So um, I'm excited because I love their stouts, and I think stout was probably the right vessel to handle the apple cider donut flavors. Okay. I thought maybe because it's summertime, they might go you know, some kind of pastry IPA, but I think this was the right move, and we'll find out here. So I'm going to pour it and pass around. Um, I-, I don't know if you guys knew. I'm sure we talked about it on the show, but Levante teamed up with Highland Orchards and they're doing a pop-up beer garden or I don't even know if you want to call it pop-up but every Friday Saturday Sunday from like noon to six or something like that they're at Highland Orchards with um you know the, the tap ha- or you know like uh the beer garden and stuff like that I still haven't made it out yet but we knew that this was coming yeah it was like we hoped it was coming we found out it was and now it's here and um I couldn't be more excited. I remember you plugging this before it was a thing. You're like, oh, I hope they do an apple cider donut it's beer. The first thing that popped into my head. Uh, we weren't the only ones with the thought. No, let's, let's everybody, be honest. Everybody, everybody, everybody as that. soon as they, we, everybody I, had the same thought. I heard it first through might be bruise. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'd like to ask Jim how many messages or comments there were yeah. on social media. Hey, you gotta make a, Are hey, you, you going to do an apple cider donut? I'm sure it's um, in the hundreds, but uh, if not higher. All right, let's go around. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a sip of this. So I I was I've made it to the uh, to the pop up beer garden with the uh, I brought the wife and kids and you dog. Did? Nice, yep. Haley, Abigail, Jamie, and and Ippa. Ippa. Ippa was uh, hanging out up there, and it's a cool scene. They have the um, they have a trailer with um, six taps, I think it was seven taps, maybe. Um, they have a little spot for they sell cans to go. Have their uh, their merch sent up, uh, and there was like a food trailer and some other stuff. It was a it was a nice little time. Nice. That's awesome. I, yeah, I can't wait to go. I've, I've only been there one time. Um, it was before the beer garden. It was right before the beer garden. I needed to grab some honey for my homebrew, and Ooh. that's why I was there. And I could tell that that location is just set up for for success. It's Absolutely. Gonna, Are we going to do the uh, top five beers on this side of the show, or is that a Patreon thing? Yeah, we're going to get to it. We are? Yeah, we're going to try. Because mine is Levante, Levante. Levante, Levante, <laughs> Levante. That's awesome. These guys, like, I've had I've had a few of their beers, and I, I like this one a lot as a stout. Like, I'm not a huge, huge stout guy. Right. I really like the flavor of this. Uh, everything about it. I'm giving it a four or five. I think. Um, I think the there's lactose or something that's making it thicker it's giving it a heavier mouth feel so i feel like for just a split second it's thin but then you get that lactose that comes in and thickens it up and i like a thick stout it's got to be thick for me to like it it's almost like a coating yeah there, there's something that's that's making it got the giving it like some sort of heavier mouth feel there's a lot of interesting flavors coming in there there's like you can get that that 
apple cider vinegar kind of in there. You can definitely pick up that taste. I'm getting some cinnamon in there. Um, there's there's roast like a roastiness at the end. Um, I wish somehow I could get more donut. Like I want to taste that donut, and I would love to like blind taste test it and know that it's that donut. But I'm not getting that. Wrap your hands around it. Warm it up. Okay. I kind of wish that I didn't know what it was before I tasted it to know to. Uh, am I tasting the apple cider donut because I know that it's there, or am I actually tasting it? I do wish there was a tad bit more cinnamon. Yeah, it's there. The cinnamon is the it's one there. flavor that I definitely get, though. I and definitely I, get it, but I just wish there was. more I think of there's it. an acidity in here too that's like almost mimicking the apple cider. You know what I mean? But but I'm not getting much apple. I don't think. Um, so I think you're onto something, Steve. I think it's a fantastic tasting stout. Um, I think I'm just like wanting. I never all got the much donuts. apple from the donuts though either. That's true. Ever. That's true. And it's also a really tough flavor to probably put in a beer. Yeah, I'm wondering how they did it. Did they just like make an awesome stout and then throw a bunch of donuts in? You know what I mean? You got to balance it. Yeah. You can't just have a stout. You got to you know how to balance it. It says apple cider this donuts provided by up. our yeah, collaborative yeah. partners at Highland Orchards, Inc. I, this I, might be a 475. I will say, <laughs> so I've learned with some heavier stouts, warm them up a little. Um, it helps bring out a lot of the flavors. After doing that, when I when I first tasted, it, I was like, "Oh, it tastes like a stout." Warming it up, I get that apple cider donut. Um, I'm gonna give this a four or five, it pushing four seven five. Though this is it's great as it warms up. You're getting all the flavors, and it gets a little bit more aromatic too. Uh, I'm going four or five. It's the, their stout game has definitely gotten to a point where I enjoy most of their stouts. It's, yeah, very, they're solid very every much. time. I am getting more now that it's warming up. Holy I am starting shit. to. Holy shit. <laughs> you, you revise your. Dude, uh, this ranking? is like really like right face to face with 475 right now. Sounds like it's a 475. It's then. a 475 for me. <laughs> it is. It's a 475 for me. This is a nearly perfect beer. I have. And I wasn't one in expecting my bag. to drink tonight. I'll leave. I'll leave one with you. I got another one in the bag. You do? I bought four four packs. So what do I do with it then? Do I just leave it out? Look, me no. with stouts usually. No. Pour it, mm-hmm. drink it slow, yeah. sip on it, and and notice the changes. You know what I mean? Take your time with it. Play your video game. Have it sitting there and sip it every few minutes, and you'll 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 you know experience different flavors and and, and new things will come out each time mm-hmm. you come back to it. It's a delicious beer. So here's a question, and I don't know if anybody here will have the answer to it, and maybe a listener will chime in for us. These pastry stouts, how what's the shelf life on these? Like yeah, it, I'd like to know. Does it fade? Is it is it good to sit on? Is it good to drink fresh? I don't know. I mean, obvi- we're drinking it fresh, and it doesn't taste hot. It doesn't taste no. It doesn't taste green to me. It's a for a fourteen percent beer. It is that doesn't. What it is? Woo, I think so. I, I didn't even look. I was just looking for that. Am I correct? Dang, twelve. Twelve. Hey. Sorry. For a twelve percent <laughs> beer, it doesn't taste hot. Uh, it, it it wherever the alcohol is, it's hidden well, but. Will these flavors hold up over time if I let this thing sit for six months, eight months? I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know that. I'm coming in four or five, though. I don't think I rated it yet. Four or five for me. Strong. All right, Taylor, you gave us your top five breweries in the country. You have two minutes. And they were Levante, Levante. We got two minutes. We're going to, well, I think we're going to have to tease this for the Patreon then. I guess so. We're going to have to tease it. Let me just say something real quick. Levante, if you're listening. You should make a listening. decadent chocolate fudge brownie stout for the Mighty Brews. Just name mm. it after Mighty Brews. Please. Do it. Might be brownies Might or be something. brownie stout. Might be brownie stout. I'm not trying to just like, you know, I'm just saying. We got to make it. Levante I, is doing everything right. They're doing everything stout. right. They are. I, I appreciate them from a business aspect. Um, I like that they're catering to their customers, that they've got a strong marketing presence. Um, I just think they're doing so many things right. Shout out, you guys. We're running out of time. I got to give a couple quick shout outs. Let me find them here. Um, John Harahan sent us a couple beers. Of course, thank you, John Harahan. Thank you, John. You are the man. Um, shit, I can't find him. The guy who um, who's always sharing stuff, Evan Aton. 
Evan Ayton, great dude. He fixed my mower for me. I posted online. He welded my mower deck back together, and he didn't even want anything. I gave him a four-pack of Treehouse for it, though, but he listens to the show. He supports. I got to give him a shout-out. Everybody, if you're listening, thank you so much for being here. If you want to know, um, if you want to listen to more, we're going to do another half hour. We're going to talk about our top five favorite breweries, and I have a whole lot of other shit we didn't even get to. So um, patreon.com slash MBN network. And um, guys, thank you so Sign much up. for being here. Thanks for uh, coming on, Brett. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much, thank man. you, Brett. Thank you. Sorry, and, Devin. <laughs> sorry, Dev. We got a couple more beers to drink. We got more stories to get into. So uh, everybody else, we will see you on the Kick the Keg segment. Coming right up. <laughs>